hello there, welcome back. We're in the studio. We got a wacky project, obviously, dressed up crazy. You might have seen this project, I've been teasing it for a while. Also got the homie behind the camera. I don't always get these dynamic follow shots, so I'm quite lucky. The six foot self portrait, dressed as King Arthur. It's done, the one to one ratio, six foot self portrait. I'm so excited to finally release this project and this video. It was a crazy long project, I think over like a terabyte of footage, just to film like three, four weeks of painting off and on. But you know, we're gonna take you through the whole project, Sam behind the camera from our original photo shoot, uh, like two months ago to gritting out, canvas prep, obviously painting all the beats, hit all the steps. It's very exciting. Hopefully you will enjoy. Smash the like button. You know how it helps the channel. Just a slave to the algorithm gods. It's like the only way to show YouTube that you enjoyed this video. But just sit back, relax, and it's going to be an awesome video, awesome project. Let's begin. And so we must begin in this other room. It begins with the photo shoot. You know, Sam has already helped me with a project like this. So basically it's a quick phone call, get him up to speed with the concept I'm thinking. And then pretty much he comes through and we just start moving lights around. We, we start getting camera equipment ready and it's kind of very in the moment messing around what we want to do, the simple concept of dressing up like a king and taking some cool creative artsy photo and, and all the things to make that happen. All right. We're trying to make a spotlight. So I hashtag shitty rigged it uh, with a piece of thick paper. Right. And a bunch of tape. So uh, this is the soft box yeah. with an LED. And we want a spotlight, which that doesn't offer. So we made a tube to shoot the light in a smaller circle. Yeah, we made a light cannon. Exactly. It's all about jerry-rigging to make it work. Can-do attitude out here. And it's we have enough lights, so it's just about moving them around to see what we actually want to do. And you gotta remember here, what we are doing is we're taking a photo, but it's for me to paint. It's painting reference. So the props, the pose, that's all important, but the most important thing is the lighting because I will be painting the light. Light on form in space. That's what we see with our eyeballs and that's what we as painters do we paint the light <laughs> my lord yeah we can try we can try like blue first or we can just go straight to red oh my slip you think king arthur had uggs man <laughs> <laughs> That's like the most fun night, honestly. And once that's all complete, we end up with an amazing photo, usually, hopefully. And we did for this one a super amazing photo, framed and help shot by Sam. But um, we then throw it into the computer because the wonderful world of Photoshop and Lightroom helps me make the photo just a little better, exactly what I want. So we throw it into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, you can do a lot of things. I like to move things around here. I'm lightening up. Part of the shimmery parts on the sword and on the crown, you could see the before and after. It's very small tweaks because we did a really good job laying out the actual uh, light in the, the composition of the photo so that there's not too much to do, but always there's a little post-processing you can mess around. Also splicing two different photos together to really get the perfect hand pose. I know these are small things, but if you have the power to change things, I'm always gonna take my time to make them exactly how I want. And boom, there's the photo. I think Sam and I knocked out of the park again, just composing the light. Everything to do, a really wonderful photo reference to paint. Awesome, very funny, and uh, I think just stylized in, the, in something I wanted to paint. So very epic. We're actually gonna use Photoshop a little later in this project for another aspect, but that's pretty much it. The next stage is obviously figuring out what I'm gonna paint on, and that was like a huge deal. I could have gotten, you know, a canvas, but it would be super expensive, this format. You know, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm really trying to make this um, this self-portrait, a, a, a six-foot self-portrait. I'm six feet tall, all of the features, the size of my head, how tall I am, exactly how I would be as if I just jumped onto a canvas and stuck myself there. So that was my goal, and that means I needed a, a six-foot at least size canvas bigger than that. I actually ended up going, I think, about 75 inches um, which is a little bigger than six feet. But you can see here, ripping out the power tools, my favorite thing to do, actually cutting and working with some wood. I basically just sanded down this piece of plywood so that I could roll this loose cotton duck canvas, which isn't, you know, it's not the highest quality like linen, but it certainly isn't poor quality. And I'm just stapling it 
to this, uh, this wood board, just a very simple solution to make uh, a solid painting surface. And I'm making my gesso mixture to use a lot of gesso to just prime this a little more, sand it down. I really like to finesse my painting surfaces, get it extremely smooth. This is all happening very quickly in this video, but it took a solid night to do all this. I'm using these heaters, these space heaters to help it dry. I was quite cold, but it helped the gesso dry quite a lot. I do a lot of sanding because again, I like to paint on a very smooth surface. You know, having teeth in the canvas is fun sometimes, but that's just what I like to do, paint on a nice surface. And so actually we're using Photoshop again because the next step is to grid out this photo. I'm not, you know, I have the capabilities to paint this by hand, but you know, this is, this project and how I want this painted to come out, I really need a rubric. You could project it onto the canvas. You can use a doodle grid. You could use carbon transfer paper, but a more traditional and really fun way to do these big transfers on this large format is to use a grid. And actually I can go in to Photoshop, input my exact canvas size. And in this case, it was 32 inches wide by like I said, 75 inches high. And that is my exact canvas um, that I'm gonna use and so I could just drag that photo in I took and at the top my format is uh, Like a real scale in inches and so in Photoshop you could use these rulers and, and mark them really precisely where you want within inches So then going back to my real canvas board in real life It's it will be the exact same if you know what I mean So this is a great little tool that I used that I was able to kind of accomplish quickly grid this out And then it's all about just putting that grid Measuring it all out on the campus. Slowly but surely, people. That's how we're rolling. I could use a chair. Now this is kind of a slow, tedious process. I was live streaming like this entire project. This took me like three weeks. So, you know, my patrons who, where I live stream, they follow every week. They were pretty tired of this whole project because I really started and finished it with them. Check out my Patreon. We paint live and draw live every week. If you're into that, um, but you know, this was as simple as just using the grid um, that I made. You could see it hanging on the right and just following that and just generically placing in these features so that I get a better rubric. I know that my proportions are right. You know, there's not high detail at all. It's simply just kind of framing the wire frame of the character out on the canvas and composing it correctly on the canvas and just giving me a good roadmap. That's like the most important thing. And so this canvas is so big, I, I'll talk about it later. I have some issues with it because it's so tall. I have this little uh, stage, this two inch stage. So it's it's good enough height for the face, but you know, I'll, I have to lift and move it. Um, you'll see throughout the process and even getting down by the feet and the sword, it's just quite low. And it's, it was just like challenging in terms of physically moving around the canvas. We're mixing the palette. You know, something awesome that we could talk about this painting is that it's quite big. It's a big composition and in terms of painting style, we'll talk about it later, but just the, the sheer amount of paint, oil paint volume that I'm using, I've never used this much oil paint. So there was a bunch of, you know, first timers for me in this, um, including the amount of paint I use and specifically the palette Thank goodness it wasn't a crazy composition. I mean, it maybe seems crazy to you, but it's not super complex. It's basically my face and my hands. I'm working on the face right now um, in terms of skin tones. And then the garb is pretty straightforward. It's like blues and reds and blacks with kind of the white um, vest. But you know, there's not a, a massive amount of complexity within the colors. So my palette and color mixing was relatively straightforward. Here in the face, I'm using actually quite a big paintbrush and my, my actual goal, I know I say this in a lot of videos, is to, is to start very loose. And the whole style of this painting, I wanted to be a very loose painterly style. You know, I knew that there was points in this painting, sections in the garb or the medallion or the crown where I could have gone hyper detailed, you know, hyper um, specific to the photo. But I really wanted this awesome, you know, loose painterly style and something you got to remember, this is a, you know, six foot painting. So no one is ever going to be viewing it as close as I'm painting it. You know, the, the minimum space away that you'll be, you know, consuming this, if you ever did see it in person is, you know, like eight to 10 feet. So, you know, all of these loose strokes from a distance will blend together and really represent the figure really beautifully. So I wasn't super worried about being super technically hyper detailed. 
Um, and I just wanted to get um, the point across with loose, awesome kind of representational brush strokes. These hands are a whole nother story. I'll talk about it later. The top hand gave me so much trouble. The muffin hand, as I call it. The hand under, underneath was not super terrible, but we'll talk about it as time goes. But like I said, I started with the face and the hands because those are the only th places where you see skin, where the skin tones are. So I could have, I mixed the skin tone palettes and we're kind of moving on towards the next step. Let's do a little mid painting update. We're talking about the next stages. You could see in this wide angle glary shot that setting in that background really just envelops the character, makes it look like we're doing something with a figure. If I stand on this lower shelf, I'm the same height, hopefully, right? A little taller here, but it's super exciting. Keep in mind, it's, it's a mediumly flat image as in the lights coming from the right to left. And it's generally the same value except for the intense shadow in the face, but also with like the shoulders and the, the garb that I'm gonna paint, which I'm like the most excited for. Um, we wanna keep this side a little lighter. And that's just something I wanna remember. And then like within the sword and the nuance, um, you can't see this picture, but you know, you wanna really exemplify those really shiny highlight parts. This white fur is gonna be beautiful. The medallion, you know, the light reflecting from the metal of this sword. And that's really it. We're obviously gonna change up the palette a little. I gotta add some blue, which I wasn't using before. Hello. So let's do it. And so we're moving on, working in stages. That's how I like to roll. We did the face and the hands. Now we're working on the garb, the dress I'm wearing, the kingly dress, and it's beautiful. There's these beautiful blues. It's like a faded blue with just a little red in it. We're also working on putting in the intense rim light of this red light, which is really beautiful. This whole shoulder piece sleeve really caught my eye in the photo. I think this is honestly one of my favorite parts of the whole painting, but just working slow, working, trying to be efficient. It's such a big canvas. You know, again, the sheer volume of oil paint was surprising to me. Again, I'm live streaming at this point. You could see that camera lens in the corner. I need another camera to live stream, but also to record. It's really fun time. We talk about my process, anything I'm working on, check out the Patreon. Shameless plug again, it's a good community over there. You can see I'm just on the floor painting which was really fun. And something that's really challenging, I didn't even realize, I mean, it's a part of oil painting, but because of the scale, because of the size, you know, there's parts of the painting that I work on that will dry over a few days, or I'll take a few days off and attack a different completely part of the painting. And that oil paint, when it dries, it fades a little, you know, the saturation decreases and your blacks and darks get a little lighter. So when reattacking that same place, you gotta make sure to oil out or to double check your values because the value that you already painted might seem lighter than it actually is. Um, and that's why you use varnish at the end because it not only unifies the finish, but it brings back all those blacks um, and, and color that um, kind of fade and dry out as the oil paint congeals and dries. So it's, it's more specific in this larger painting because again, I would work on different parts and take a day or two off and you know, just you gotta make sure you're oiling out or, you know, really checking your values, especially in the darkness. And um, yeah, just working more on this sword, just putting in local colors. Um, you know, I kind of work in two passes, again, with this delicate part in the garb. You know, I didn't want to go too ham. I'm just kind of putting in local colors and we'll go with the second pass, this medallion. I wanted to just carbon copy so I can nail that little lion shape, which was so small compared to everything else. Um, and I think it, that turned out great. I haven't put the highlights in either. Um, the little chains, very simple here. We're gonna add to that later. And then boom, reattacking this face. This is the second pass and boy, did I struggle. I'm in a battle right now. Last night I kind of reattacked the face because I did that first layer and then I was gonna you know, figure it out and I lost that battle. Very frustrating. I was very unfocused and I was just 
aggravated, whatever. New day today. I only got like two more days to work on this because I want to upload this video on Saturday and my video production, just deadlines. It's good pressure, but it's also means that I kind of just got to crank things out. I'll probably be in the studio late tonight, refocused, clean the palette. We just got to attack this, be patient, be focused. Um, and yeah, most of it's done. You know, uh, the, the second pass is coming also that I'll do today and tomorrow. Highlights, details, fit, figure things out. Just the final little uh, touches on everything. So that's the plan. New day, new painting session, focus up. But before we continue, we gotta talk about everyone's favorite segment, the sponsor that helps me make these videos, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes, ranging from all different genres within photography, film, fine arts, everything in between. And it's taught by the leading professionals in those disciplines. I don't take a lot of sponsors on the channel, only the ones I think are super applicable and that the people who are viewing my uh, videos can actually use and benefit them. Skillshare is exactly that. Their whole online courses, their website, user interface, it's all of the highest quality and really curated to learn. One of my personal favorite classes by the homie Jazza, Mastering Illustration, a kind of walkthrough of everything to do with color theory and illustration, it's really awesome. Skillshare's whole platform is really just for every type of person, whether you're a new hobbyist looking to get into creative endeavors or a career professional looking to level up, there's classes for every skill level for every type of person. And the price is unbeatable compared to in-person classes with their annual membership for less than $10 a month you can't lose and it's just an unbelievable resource that I, I really think can help people and benefit from it. So if you click the link in the description, you get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. Great opportunity. Again, these sponsorships help me spend two, three weeks on these giant projects. Um, it's really helpful. You know how it goes and Skillshare is an awesome platform. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Let's go attack that face again. And I somehow mustered the focus to re-attack this face and it turned out way better. I'm really happy with this kind of second pass, but I spent probably way too much time on the face. I pretty much repainted it like three times. And you can see it's a little loose, it's a little choppy here and there, but I really enjoy this kind of process of just kind of not being super delicate with the paint and really just mixing everything around. And again, when you're looking this at this portrait, I guess, from super far away, which is only a small part of this giant painting, it really does look like me, I think, and that was my biggest issue. And also the crown and just, how it um, kind of communicates with the rest of the outfit and the composition. So I was happy that I re kind of did that, but it was certainly frustrating. And um, you know, this painting is coming to an end. It, it's, it's crazy how fast these time lapses are. <laughs> I'm just thinking about all these different stages. It took a while. I was really working on this painting like pretty full time back and forth for like three weeks. And um, it was just a lot, but you know, hopefully you enjoy this full process just in a quick 15 minutes. I'm just adding some final details here, darkening this left arm, putting some cast shadows, and I kind of changed the hands around, and my gosh, I don't even want to talk about it. This bottom hand is fine, it's very representational, but this muffin hand on top, I mean, you could see the reference photo is a weird reference with my hand, but it was just hard, and hands are just terribly difficult. But I think I make up for it with this sword. I think this sword looks awesome with the reflection right here, and I think it looks even better than the sword in real life. I, I kind of like idolize this sword in terms of the light and the, the sheen, and so I'm, I was really happy with that. It's like my favorite, you know, besides that sleeve, I think the sword really pops with this dark background and the contrast, and it was just a great time. So I guess that's all she wrote. What a epic project, super happy. I mean, from this angle, you could kind of see the oil paint glare and the different finishes. Some's a little glossier, some's a little matte. You know, the oil paint is still drying. I just really finished like yesterday, still wet paint on there. And it's gonna take a few weeks for it to be, you know, fully touch dry, maybe level out with the finish. And then I won't really be able to varnish it for, you know, three, four months. You really wanna let that dry. I think I'll keep it on this wood board, wood panel until I'm done varnishing, but I will plan on eventually kind of just 
cutting it out into a loose piece of canvas to be easier to move, roll up, whatever, whatever have you. But <laughs> there she is, there he is, there I am. Super fun. And you know, this whole project was just a really, a, a slight taste, really dipping my toes into these big compositional paintings. You know, this wasn't very narrative focused. It was just like a self portrait with a bigger scale, big outfit, you know, cool creative lighting. But moving forward, my plan um, is to do really big, big oil paintings with narrative composition, some sort of story behind it in my new studio, which I'm moving into this week. I'll give you a tease at the end for the people who have stayed this long, this 20 minute video. I love you. Thank you. Um, you know, my goal in that studio is to really up my game and just try some new stuff and really big ambitious projects within painting specifically. So I have a bunch of really crazy wacky ideas, including hiring models, doing the same sort of system and style of this project, photo shoot, getting props and environments together, photographing it to then paint big scale, really exciting. So the future holds some crazy wackiness. You should subscribe to stay tuned. I'm going to be rolling out a bunch of vlogs, a bunch of building the new studio episodes. You know, I'm really excited about that. I think people like to learn about that, how to move in or what I'm doing, building the studio out, whatever. I love those sorts of videos, honestly. Other people building studios, setting up their painting area, whatever. So very exciting. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video.